That's very far outside. Yeah, baby, she is gonna do it. And welcome everybody to ASD Live, brought to you by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries. Day 40 on the racing schedule. We're down to the last four weeks of racing, but let's take a quick look back at last week's racing action. Who was hot? Well, on the rider's side, it was Sheldon Chekines, who's now vaulted himself into a tie for third with 30 wins. He had the hat trick on Wednesday. Leroy Nelson also had two wins, so those two are deadlocked. 
at third in the standings. And on the trainer's side, Jerry Gornel had a good night. He had two wins on the card. And Shelly Brown, she vaulted herself onto the leaderboard. She's now fifth as she had the hat trick also on Wednesday. Stretch, what did you see last week? Yeah, so, so last week, as, you, as uh, if you watch the show regularly, you know I, I kind of figure out variants and stuff. So last week I felt, after doing the numbers, was the fastest week of the meet that uh, threw out, especially the first two early numbers. So that first and middle calls were well above par, so we ha I had to adjust it. So something to consider when you're comparing, for example, this, uh, this last week from two weeks back where it was quite slow. So it, it, you don't really, that's why you can't compare days too often and, and you've got to adjust. So you might think a certain horse is, is faster, but he was on such a fast day. It, it, you have to really compare and pay attention to the, even the form variant. Um, yeah, Kurt, it is hard to believe that there's a, a, only a month left in racing. It's kind of flew by for us. Um, so I thought because we're down to that final month, a couple things that I like to look for, and then Kurt will jump in as well is uh, you've got to recognize how long some of the horses have been racing. So some started down south and probably have been racing seven or eight months continuously. So they're probably getting a little bit tired. And, and those horses you've got to be a little bit careful with is once they start to, you know, decline a bit, it's hard for them to get them back. So watch for that. Whereas some other horses that maybe have only had three or four starts, they still have a chance to improve. So really watch the number of starts on the consecutive there. So the lightly raced ones, good chance to maybe, maybe go after them and thinking there. Uh, the next one that I like to talk about is the long layoff. Horses that have not raced um, or just had one start at the beginning of the meet and haven't raced, they've had the whole meet to get back. So there's probably something not quite right. So be careful, especially if a horse drops after a long layoff, trainer wants to at least try one start be careful I'm gonna, I'll give you a stat maybe next week of how good or why you'd want to play against a horse a horse like that uh, yeah so stay tuned for that Kurt anything uh, to add to the uh well, Stretch, in, in your numbers there, the last two weeks actually have been really fast. How does the previous week compare to last week? This last week was even faster than the previous week by about one or two lengths. So, um, especially the early times, I guess just that heat. Um, and then you talked about how they, they figured out the, uh, the track with the harrowing and stuff. So you're, you're better at uh, understanding them when they go deeper or, or not as deep on that. Actually explain that uh, briefly there about the harrowing. There. Yeah, I will. In the last couple of days, we did have a lot of rain. The track was sealed, so they pack it down. So the water just hits it and runs into the infield. So as I was watching them today, they repacked it before about an hour ago. They just opened it up at about 630. And the harrows, what they are, is what's dragged behind the tractors to scoop the top of the surface. Well, they have little teeth on the bottom and they can go deep down when it is dry and kind of call it up a bit and get it all nice and fluffy for the race service. But today it didn't go in that far. And if you are looking at the racetrack, it looks like they just scraped the surface a bit because they didn't want to go down too deep as we did have a pile of rain. And unfortunately we didn't have sun and wind, which are a track man's best friend for drying out the racetrack. The sun just came out probably about 45 minutes ago. So it will dry out through the night as long as that sun keeps up because the wind has been blowing all day. But I'm expecting because those harrow teeth didn't go in that far. I think it's going to be lightning fast early. It, it does look pretty good out there. It's probably going to start out at about good, the track condition, and then progress maybe even a fast if that sun and wind keep up throughout the evening. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty well what I got on the heralds. <laughs> that's excellent, excellent info. I, I like uh, learning about that. And you're right, we're not going to be quite sure of what's going on and, and a track like this can change as the card goes. Uh, yeah, so I've handicapped with sloppy. I might have to make some adjusts. So uh, Beth is going to have to stay tuned uh, throughout the day on my bet changes. But Yeah, uh, myself too. I looked at the track this morning. It was pea soup out there. But now, like I said, it does look really good. But I expect a lightning fast racetrack. And in saying that, let's kick off the card here. Race number one, our co-featured event. It's the Distaff Stakes. Stretch, huge favorite, Hidden Grace. 
What can we say about her besides she definitely is the one to beat? Oh, for sure. She showed why she's one of the top two mares on the ground this year. We haven't had our match rates just yet, but uh, she can sit just off. She can go right to the lead. She's going to probably make it look quite easy again. No nothing really going to change. It's just going to be fun to watch, watch what she does. And, and uh, I guess if she doesn't handle this track, but she's handled it before. She's already got two wins on, on an off track. So not too worried about that. There is a little bit more pressure, I guess you could say, adding the four. Um, I would say if, if pers uh, persistent, persistent. Yes, look at that. Good job, Shrek. <laughs> Thank you. It's early in the week. Uh, if she was on her top of her game, maybe give her a bit more of a run, but she's been off over almost two months now. She was a scratch last time. She does have the workouts. She does have talent. She needs to, to I don't think she, even on her top of game can beat her. I don't think she's at peak form right now, but that's who my second selection is. Maybe challenge it a little bit. Um, and then I went to the three as my third selection. Uh, just a great season. This horse has been running so, so well. Uh, last, last time it kind of surprised me on how much showed a little more speed than usually and actually pressured Hidden Grace. Uh, probably doesn't need to do that. It depends where persistent is. If she's not right, not quite at her peak or, or a little below, I think then she can upset the three. But it's 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 two four three, maybe two three four for me, Kurt. Yeah, stretch. I'm with you there. Those are the top three contenders. Hidden Grace. What can you say about her? 14 wins out of 20 starts here at the Downs. 14 starts, 11 trips to the winner's circle. And on a side note, uh, we did have the yearling sale this weekend on Sunday. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, the sales topper, hip number 10, was a full sister to Hidden Grace and Melisandra. Melisandra is eight for eight. So it was a good family, and that horse went for over $50,000. It was an absolute bidding frenzy going on, and I, I was enjoyed to witness that. I thought it was absolutely great for the industry here in Manitoba. So Hidden Grace, she's the one to beat. Persistent, I really think she is the second best in here. Devin Gittens, very well getting horses back to the racetrack. Obviously, she had problems throughout the last race. He's got her ready to rock and roll. Whether she can get the full mile is the question mark, but I think he can do it. So I got two, three, and four, depending how the track's gonna play. Now we're gonna carry on to race number two, the other co-featured event, the 58th running of the Osiris Stakes. Four two-year-olds going five and a half furlongs and another big favorite stretch. Yes, and I'm gonna make a statement in my opinion anyway. I think Diamond Digger is the best two-year-old on the ground. You may disagree. I know you like the, the Betty horse. Banking on Betty. Betty, yes. I'm sticking with Diamond Digger. I, it's going to be my fan favorite horse I'm going to be following. This horse has impressed me each start. The, what's impressed about last time is didn't get a great start. Little trouble. You managed to fight through it and still run big and crush them. I really thought that was such a great race of, of not a perfect start and, and just took over. This horse, from the first race to the second race, to me, physically looked even bigger. Can't wait to see what he looks like uh, uh, today in a few hours. So, yeah, you won't get a price. It's just going to be fun to watch a potential superstar, whether, whether he stays here or moves on to even uh, tougher racing. Uh, it, nothing changes. That, ho that horse should, for me, just crush the field. But I will go to some horses that are improving. We both have the five for second. Both see the same thing, probably. This horse had that uh, unfortunate first start then an okay second start, and then a really good third start. I like that this horse knows how to close, which is a really good sign on a two-year-old. Doesn't kind of relax, and the jockey's able to close light. Really, I think that's a big sign for a two-year-old rather than just speed. I think that horse just passes him late and runs second. And then I like the one horse, that horse's first start. Again, not a great start, recovered, took over. Maybe not as fast as the top two, but uh, I think that horse is a future too. Four, five, one, Kurt. Yeah, I'm with you on the top two. Diamond Digger has done no wrong, easily drawing off to win both times. Favorite, finally got out of the starting gate last time out and ran absolutely huge behind banking on Betty, only losing by a length and a quarter. So I think those are the top two. Now you got to find the third place finisher. I do like Brown Owl, but if you compare the times, which are on the same day, at the half mile, Brown Owl would have been about 10 lengths behind Diamond Digger. 
So I'm looking at someone else to be a little bit closer. So I went to number two unscripted for my third choice. This horse was the less than even money favorite against banking on Betty. Did disappoint, beaten by 10 and a quarter, but has come back with two sharp workouts since. Good half mile and then a five furlongs. I expect this horse to run a lot better than the last time. And if it does even improve a bit, I think it's my third choice in here. So I'm taking four, five and two. Now we're going to carry on to race number three, kicking off jackpot pick five, wagering for a $3,500 claimer for three-year-olds and up that are non-winners of the year or non-four-lifers. Going six furlong, stretch, who do you got? All right, I've got it down to three in here, and one of them is not Kurt's top selection. So here we go. That's good. <laughs> that is good. I like odds. <laughs> That's good. You're getting the odds. Okay, I'm going to start with, with the five. Yes, I did mention careful on the declining horses. The reason I have put this horse in, I watched the replay and I, I just wanted to make sure, was he declining or, or what? And this horse got in a pretty good all out duel with some pretty good company in here, including Hot Rod and Rushed Up and Pressed. And so there's not a lot of speed in here. And I think that potentially that this horse just might just get back to his old form. Doesn't have to be as good as he was a few months, uh, about a month or so ago, but just that slight drop makes it could get the lead and, and be controlling speed, any kind of drop, gate to wire for me. Uh, and then the next one is the three. Yes, the horse is, is dropping, but we've talked about these different levels. Uh, doing the figures here from 75 down to five is tough, five to 35 is even tougher on that kind of drop. The figures are there. So the horse is actually running decently for the level that he's in right now. So. Uh, not the big numbers from last year, but running evenly what it is from uh, this year. So it's a good sign. I think the horse gets a great trip and, and potentially could win. And my third selection uh, has been just running very game this year. I usually take this horse. I'm just uh, thinking the horse is going to be out wide, make the move. And, and uh, if, if Geezy doesn't, is it really off for Maybe this horse gets the lead, could clear. Um, I've got it 5-3-6, but it almost boxed those picks. Yeah, I expect this to be a wide open event here in race three. I went to number two, Rule the Night. I've been watching this horse. It has been running at Fawner in the past. Now it's gone to Chippewa and Fargo in, in the latest turn of events. But uh, Rule the Night came off of two wins in Fawner Park early on in the year and then went over and did the bush circuit in North Dakota, Chippewa Downs and Fargo. But this horse ran against some really good ones there. My father's eyes in the stake race on June the 6th. That horse is a solid $5,000 claimer here. Master Juba, piles of early speed, just couldn't carry that speed, but was going four and a half furlongs at Chippewa. And this horse made a good run at it late. So I really like that. And it also beat a horse, Yo Why Me, who made its first start here at the Downs, a winning one at the $5,000 level. So rule the night. I think this horse fits really well in here. We'll be close to the pace, not on it. And these horses have been doing well. So I like the five to one morning line. I do like proud and loud because it's within five lengths that I like to use horses getting beat by. American League was the other one that took this same drop and got the job done and paid about seven, 790, I think, to win. And Valid Thor comes running every time. So I got two, six and three. Now we're gonna carry on to race number four, kicking off $25,000 guaranteed pick four wagering, a $5,000 claimer for Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota breads that are non two lifers. They're gonna go the six furlong stretch. Who do you like? All right, I've got three contenders here, but there's a bit of a problem. Uh, there's three contenders that like to go to the lead. There's a chance it could set up for, the, for a bomber. I did look even closer into this race and I've determined that the seven is not a need the lead horse. And because of that, it's my top selection. It's cutting back. Um, I think the horse is going to just kind of chase and stalk behind the four, make his move. And, and uh, if you look back from a couple starts, um, he did kind of just sit just off and kind of take, take over. I, hopefully he doesn't try the race that he did two back where he just gunned to the lead and gets in an all-out duel because then that horse will not be there. And so... That's why it's my top selection. And because I think the seven's not your, uh, the need the lead, I feel that the four is more of a need the lead horse. And so if the seven decides, let's just sit off and take a run, maybe the four gets brave. It's a big drop from, from the 12-5 non two open to the, the uh, state bred, or the, sorry, the province bred horses, if you want to call it that way. 
And, uh, and then the last one is the six, is Kurt's top selection. I like that horse. My only little concern, he'll have to try to sell me on this. This horse doesn't pass horses in the stretch. Maybe the drop, he can't, she can pass horses in the stretch. Or he can, sorry, he can pass horses. So, seven, four, six, Kurt. Yeah, I got the same three as you. Not afraid, already won this condition last time out but was disqualified and that was going around two turns for the first time. Crown Royal is taking a drop in here from the 12.5 non two lifer down into the 5,000 non two. But I like Right of Vengeance. This horse ran a really good race chasing last time out. Didn't make the front as Pucker got out there and Pucker was an old maiden allowance horse that took the drop broke the maiden, broke the non two, and now is in the non three condition, but ran absolutely huge because that race was six furlongs and speed was doing well. Pucker ran around there. Wits Coco ended up getting second. Wits Coco came back to win an allowance non two lifer going around two turns, ended up going wire to wire at $50. So right of vengeance, I expected this horse to fold late down the lane, but it didn't, it, it kept running. And I really like that. That's why I like this horse today. Pressing the lead, keep going. And a lot of these other horses, if they want to go press, they're not all going to finish. But the way this horse ran last time out, he gets my top selection with Not Afraid for second and Crown Royal rounding up my top three. Now we're going to carry on to race number five, a $3,500 claimer for the boys, three and up, only going five furlongs. This is a speedy rematch of earlier in the season. Exactly, Kurt. Rematch of July 7th. Looking forward to it. It's just fun when they, the racing secretary writes these and you get some rematches. So it's really good. I have decided to go back to the horse that I, did, I liked last time because I want to give this sort of Tis Funny another chance. It didn't break as sharp as, as, as he usually does. And so I decided probably hopefully breaks a little bit better and sits just that much closer and if being that much closer makes that even move that he likes to do some t most times, uh, or be sitting off the flank of the one and take over. That, that's how I kind of see it. I think the one is absolutely the horse to beat. Makes perfect sense to use this horse. I'm just kind of looking for a price. I'm using the one and four all over. But my upset special is, is the seven here now. The track has changed. So I've, I've got a, when I handicapped this morning and talked to Kurt, he said it was sloppy. So I've got to adjust, so stay tuned for maybe a chance. And that's the seven. Take a look at the races on the, on the slop. His best two are in the slop. So if it's still a little bit wet at this time, watch out. You could get that all out duel between uh, Call Me Richard and Hot Rod and Tis Funny. We know Northern Sky sometimes gets there too late. This one horse might sit a little bit better. 15 to one morning line on the outside, getting up at a price, 417, Kurt. Yeah, I ended up taking Call Me Richard in here. Yes, that last one looks like a bad race, seven beat and 11, but the company that day of Drizzy, Wits, Dollar Night, and Zucchini, that was not an easy race at all. Stretch was talking about the levels. First level allowance, optional 10,000 claimers down to 75. Those horses drop in, they end up doing well. 75 goes to five, those horses do well. Five goes to three, they do well. So this one's taking a double drop from the 75 down to 35. I think it has the most speed out of them all. Sheldon Chickeness jumps back aboard. So I expect this horse to head on out to the front end, play catch me if you can. This five furlongs is absolutely perfect for it. I do think it will get company from Tiz Funny and Hot Run, but it draws the inside, which is a huge advantage so I see him hanging on for the win but my long shot in here is number three Warbridge is taking a little drop from the five thousand dollar level where it was going seven and a half furlongs I really don't think that's his distance he likes sprinting his two previous races was a second beat in the neck and then a win over empirical data and Maddie's pro yes it was lesser company than these but has the perfect running style so that's why I like Warbridge in there and to round up my top three hot rod and got left in the gate rushed up battled and tired if it didn't break slow out of the gate I think would have probably even been in the photo for the win so I'm down to one three and five now we're going to carry on to race number six, an allowance optional $15,000 claimer for three-year-olds. They're going to go seven furlongs. Stretch, who do you got in here? Yeah, we got another good race on, uh, on tap tonight. Uh, 
A little tricky to handicap a bit. Uh, I, th I think the one thing we're going to probably agree on is four and five. There should be a pretty good pace battle up front in here. And so that's why I've kind of looked at the, uh, some of the potential closers or who's going to get a trip. Because I don't think either of them can go gate to wire with that much speed between the two of them. So I decided on the more lightly raced horse in here, and that's the two. This, this horse decided not to go in the uh, August 11th race, probably because it was a little too short. I like that, just kind of waiting for this race. Uh, I think the horse is starting to improve on the dirt. I like that. I was hesitant to take this horse because of the turf races, but those last couple were, have just been getting better. As long as the horse doesn't sit too far back, I think the horse has a good chance to get up late. Uh, so that's my top selection. Uh, and then the seventh seven horse is my second selection. I thought this horse uh, ran the best race on the August 11th. Uh, probably is, is sitting on a win. Uh, there ha the horse has run quite a bit lately, so you got to be careful there. And the tough post position. Remember, we're only going seven furlongs. And the last, last horse I've got to mention is... I, I needed a third horse, kind of searching, and that's the six. I think two turns is, is a bit better for him. I did beat uh, many of these three back. Last race was only okay. So um, I'm going to wide call it a wide open race, but I'll give you two, seven, six. Yeah, I agree with you. Wide open. This is kind of a little rematch almost of the Derby trial. You're adding Call the Cops. You're adding Impressive Sense and Ben Roy to the mix. But the other four, Warriors Hero, Stone Cafe, Flash of Glory, and Wits Taquito, they all finished within two lengths of each other in the Derby trial, and, and that any of those horses could have won that race that day, and Stone Cafe was the one that ran fifth, beaten two in there. The rest of them were in the photo, but I expect Stone Cafe can improve if it does get a loose and easy lead. Call the Cops is improving in a little tough. Ben Roy, last time out, six beaten eight in that allowance, non two lifer, but didn't run a bad race, and then impressive sense got a dream trip last time out and got through on the inside to get that win that horse is going to take a lot of money also wide open but i'm going to go to wits taquito on top with warriors hero and stone cafe now we're going to carry on to race number seven a 2500 hundred dollar claimer for three olds and up that are non-winners of the year they're only going to go five furlongs scratch number one empirical data stretch what do you got in the finale yeah we, we have another five furlong you don't get that that often so really make, always check the distance before you start handicapping a race. You don't want to assume six furlongs or go from there. Uh, these are, there. I don't think there's any pure distance specialists at five or five and a half, but all of these horses in here do do well at uh, the five, five and a half. So that, that's uh, something to consider. I'm going with uh, the four horses, my top selection. The reason is I don't mind the drop. I think the horse has to make the drop. Finds a real good spot for the win. Uh, only tired at the top of the stretch and against that talented 5,000 claimer. There's some good ones in here. This horse some, showed some very good speed. Probably go right near the on or near the lead in here, but I think just the class, the horse can press, take over, and, and potentially hang on. Uh, that, that's why it's my top selection. The three is the horse that I think can certainly upset. Kurt's got it as his top choice. Don't disagree, I'll be using both. This horse, I think, will be getting the best trip in here, potentially a dream trip. If the four, you know, battles it out is a little bit wide, it kind of sets it up for that. So I've got it down to those two. I'll give you my seven because the seven is going to be the favorite. Ha was, you know, tougher. It this is a tougher field than last time. Now it's going to be on the outside. It's also going to be the favorite. Has the talent to be there. I can't bet this horse to win, but I've got to have it in the trifecta. Four, three, seven. Yeah, I'm with you, Stretch. Uh, the only change, Greeley Spirit might take a big advantage here as the two, four, five, six, and seven. Well, they all possess early speed, and we've seen a couple of those races already this year. Six horse field, five of them go out, battle it out. The other one sits in behind, waits till the head of the lane, and then scoots through and goes after those tiring leaders and wins because all of them, as I said, have speed. Deadly Black Eagle, I do like that big drop in class from the 5,000 going all the way down to the 2,500, but he is 10 years old, but he is showing 
a lot more than he did earlier on in the season when he was beaten by 17 lengths. So I think Deadly Black Eagle, if it can kind of shake free, it will be tough in here. But I think Greeley Spirit does get an absolute dream trip. And Gokro had the win last time out, taken away by Tally. So I'm thinking he's third best along with Stretch. Good luck with all your selections this evening. And I'll be right back with the changes on this evening's Carter Racing.
And if everybody can get their pens and programs ready, here are the changes on this evening's seven race car to racing. Turning your programs to race number one. It's our co-featured event, the 26th running of the Distaff Stakes. Just the lone overweight, and it's on your television monitors. Now turning your programs to race number two, our other co-featured event, the 58th running of the Osiris Stakes for two-year-olds. Again, just some overweights. Now turning your programs to race number three, kicking off jackpot pick five, wagering the Jarvis Suarita, who is Starfield Stables. It's in recognition of a lifetime contributions to the Manitoba thoroughbred racing and breeding industry. There are no changes, and the jackpot pick five carryover, just over $111,000, but if you're the single winning ticket, you will take home a quarter million dollars. Now turning your programs to race number four, kicking off $25,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. Number two, who hears a Horton make the jockey Jorge Carreño? That's race number four. Number two, who here is a Horton? Make the jockey, Jorge Carreño. Now turning your programs to race number five. There are no changes. Turning your programs to race number six. In race six, number three, Ben Roy. Make the jockey, Richard Mangley. That's race number six. Number three, Ben Roy will now be ridden by Richard Mangley. Now turning your programs to race number seven. In race seven, scratch number one, empirical data. Number six, little bit of thunder. The owner should read Perry Kavanaugh. That's race number seven, scratch the one, empirical data. Number six, little bit of thunder. The owner should read Perry Kavanaugh. The jackpot high five carryover just over $120,000. Well, it's turned out to be a good day here in Winnipeg. Well, it looks like the sun's shining through, at least on our TV as we're inside, but let's call it partly cloudy. I'm not that angry on that uh, cloud. The temperature, 18 degrees Celsius or 64 degrees Fahrenheit, and the stewards have listed the racetrack as muddy. A muddy racetrack to start the card this evening. And they're going to go to the post for the Distaff Stakes in 15 minutes.
And welcome down on the paddock for race number one. We're kicking off the week of racing with the 26th running of the Distaff Stakes for older fillies and mares at our Manitoba Fools. They're gonna go one mile for a purse of $35,000 stretch. One to five on Hidden Grace. Well, she is the queen, at least on the breed side right now. And I can't wait until she tackles Miss Imperial once again. Absolutely. Yeah, one to five is probably the highest you're going to get. It might uh, have your crazy late money jumping on, might go even lower. But uh, she, if, if ever a horse probably deserves to be that kind of price, she's right there with it. She beat this field by seven last time out, uh, two the other two. And uh, she didn't look very challenged. It was such a good ride with Carino, just kind of sat on the flank of, of – um, the three horse there and uh kind of took over whenever whenever she wanted to i i thought that was impressive the the pace wasn't that fast she might have to chase the four i think maybe the persistent might go out but she's just a, a great uh, mare to watch and just she's got that acceleration at the what she looked like from about the eighth pole when when it was looked like oh maybe there's a doubt but then not really. Yeah, no, I I think he still had a couple of gears yes. left last time out. If you look at that race on June 18th at Century Mile, she rattled down there in 107 and three. She actually broke the track record in that outing, getting to win by a neck over Raider. And then Stone Carver, two races later, broke the track record yet again. But she has a pile of early speed. She can go a rut of ground. She's lightly raced with only those three starts. She just toyed with them last time out. I don't even think she needs the lead. Yes, she's been going to the lead in a lot of her outings, but uh, she is quite the racehorse. Sitting off a of sweet design last time out, and Jorge Correno, I'm sure if I asked him uh, how many gears he had left, he probably would have said about two or three. She was just a paid workout in there, and I'm expecting kind of the same thing because I don't think they're gonna press her that hard because everybody else do, still wants to run second, but they're kind of looking at it. She's going to be tough to beat. Absolutely. Uh, Persistent wasn't in the last race because she, she was scratched. Um, she's not running. She's very talented. She's just not at the level she was last time. She's the one that unfortunately always had to finish second to Hidden Grace. She looks very good in the paddock there. Uh, Definitely does. Yeah. And early on in the year, she was running lights out in that win in the Astral Moon. And then second to Miss Imperial in the Lava Andre. She actually ran a massive race there. If she wasn't duking it out early and maybe pulled the trigger a little later, Miss Imperial, I don't think would have caught her in that race. But I think something happened in the last one, the Canada Day. But I expect her to run good. Two solid works. Absolutely. Sweet Designs, another one that's been running really well. She won't be on the lead this time. She's going to sit back. Um, over 23,000 uh, this year already. Uh, yeah, she be she actually belongs in this, absolutely belongs in this race. I think uh, Sheldon will probably just sit back and try to close late and pick up the pieces. Yeah, and Dazzling Gold, uh, she's in here. She needs the front end to run her best race. You see she ran third behind Sweet Design Hidden Grace, but she isn't going to make the lead in here. She's not as fast as Hidden Grace or Persistent, so she's going to be running, I think, for second or third money in here. So let's go to our wagers here in race number one. Stretch, what are you starting off with? Uh, just a smaller one. I, I knew you were going to go with the straight <laughs> one. Look at that. I've got a $5 pick three wheel two with the four with the three, five, six. Well, if you want to play stretches, add the two, make it 20 bucks. But I'm going to $20 straight, two, four, and two. Good luck with all your wagers here in race number one. And we'll see you back for our co-featured event, race number two. A 
Assiniboy Downs is proud to present our co-featured event here in race number one. It's a 26 running of the Distaff Stakes. They're going to go one mile for $35,000. Number one is Dazzling Gold, owned by Starfield Stable, trained by Tiffany Husbands with Richard Mangley. Number two is Hidden Grace, owned by Barry Arneson, Cam Ziprick, and Charles Fouliard, trained by Lise Pruett with Jorge Carreño. Number three is Sweet Design, owned by Jerry Lambert and Lynn Matthews, trained by Tom Gardipe Jr. with Sheldon Chickeness. Running out our featured field is number four, Persistent, owned by Dr. Betty Hughes, trained by Devin Giddens with Leroy Nelson. Following the running of the Distaff Stakes, Ed Pollack, a CTHS director, will make a trophy presentation to the winning connections. Post time for the Distaff Stakes, four minutes away. Now, two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, we're kicking off the week with the uh, mile stake races, uh, local horses here. Hidden Grace, you're not going to make much money betting her to win, so you've got to figure out a different way. Uh, she is the queen here. I think that the four is the horse going to the lead, and so she's going to have to run it down. That's her running style. She can be right there. Persistent has that speed to get clear and maybe try to steal it. I don't think she's quite good enough, so that's why I've got it 2-4-3. Yeah, Stretch, she's the one to beat Hidden Grace. One to five on the board right now. I agree that Persistent is gonna do some chasing. Ran in the Canada Day, didn't finish that well in there, but needs a better rebound effort. Does have two good works coming in, but I'm gonna take the three. Sweet design for second, as she did run second last time out in the trial. So I'm down to two and three with the four for third. Good luck here in the Distaff Stakes.
post time. Dazzling gold uh, leaves the Manitoba Red Philly and Mares into the starting gate. Next in, Hidden Grace. Two left to go. Sweet design, ready to go in. And just waiting on persistent. And they'll all be set. They're at the post. And they're off in the 26th running of the Distaff Stakes. Quickly from the inside, Hidden Grace shoots out to take control of the early lead. On the outside, Persistent with a mitful. Sitting back in second as they pass the grandstand for the first time. Third is Dazzling Gold. And fourth, Sweet Design, who's going to sit about five lengths off of it. The opening quarter, 23 and 3. And Hidden Grace and Jockey Jorge Carreno have the lead by a length and a half. Persistent, getting up to her in second, Dazzling Gold. Is four lengths back in third in Sweet Design. Still the early trailer. The half a quick 47 and four in Hidden Grace. Still well in hand with that lead by two. Persistent in second. Dazzling Gold creeping up closer in third. And Sweet Design starting to get rolling from the back. Hidden Grace. She is putting on a show, 1-12-1, and one, as she hits the head of the lane, and she's now up by five. Persistent on the outside, dazzling gold, running huge today, trying to get second money with Sweet Design being a late rallier. This is all hidden grace inside the 16th pole, gonna win by seven. Dazzling gold, a dazzling second, Third's going to go to Persistent, and fourth to Sweet Design. The Stewart's supposed to number two, Hidden Grace. As your winner, second goes to number one, Dazzling Gold. Third to number four, Persistent. And fourth to number three, Sweet Design. They went the opening quarter 23 and three. The half 47 and four. Six furlongs, 112 and one. Time for the mile. A sizzler, 138 and three.
Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner of the 26th running of the Distaff Stakes, that's number two, Hidden Grace. Hidden Grace is a bay mare, five years old, by going commando, out of the mare High Pioneer, by pioneering. Owned by Barry Arneson, Cam Ziprick, and Charles Fulliard. Trained by Lee Sprett, and ridden to victory by Jorge Carreño. Time for the mile, 138-3. and three. Number two, Hidden Grace, was proudly bred right here in Manitoba by her owners, Cam Ziprick, Charles Fulliard, and Barry Arneson. Assiniboy Downs is very pleased to have on hand Ed Pollock, our CTHS director of the Manitoba division, to make a trophy presentation to the winning connections. Race one is official in the upcoming second race. Our other co-featured event, it's the 58th running of the Osiris Stakes for two-year-olds. And there are no changes. Race two, kicking off another pick three. Ladies and gentlemen, the stewards have upgraded the track condition to fast. Once again, the track condition now upgraded to fast. Shoots out to take control of the early oh. lead. Oh. Sitting back in second as they pass the grandstand for the first time. Third is Dazzling Gold, and fourth, Sweet Design, who's going to sit about five lengths off of it. The opening quarter, 23 and 3, and Hidden Grace and Jockey Jorge Carreño have the lead by a length and a half. Persistent, getting up to her in second, Dazzling Gold is four lengths back in third, and Sweet Design, still the early trailer. The half a quick 47 and four and Hidden Grace still well in hand with that lead by two. Persistent in second, Dazzling Gold creeping up closer in third and Sweet Design starting to get rolling from the back. Hidden Grace, she is putting on a show, one twelve and one as she hits the head of the lane and she's now up by five. Persistent on the outside, dazzling gold, running huge today, trying to get second money with Sweet Design being a late rallier. This is all hidden grace inside the 16th pole, gonna win by seven. Dazzling gold, a dazzling second, third's gonna...
And welcome back down the paddock for race number two. This is our co-feature event. It's the 58th running of the Osiris Stakes. Four two-year-olds going five and a half furlongs. Stretch, what a display by Hidden Grace. And once again, that track condition has been upgraded to fast after Hidden Grace absolutely flew down there. 138 and three for the mile. Wow, is she the real deal for a Manitoba brand? Yeah, uh, would you that call that just a morning workout or a prep for the next race against possibly Miss Imperial? That's a morning mm. workout and she did it so easy. The next race comes back, I think in nine days. So uh, I expect her to be cooled out in the <laughs> barn. Jorge Correno, as you've seen, he didn't move a muscle down the lane. He took one peak. Nobody was coming and then just posed across the wire. That was one of those that Alan Cuthbertson, way back in the day when I was interviewing him, he'd always look at me and say, Kurt, you could have rode that one. <laughs> yeah, but I, I would have to have the Velcro, the full helmet and everything else. Oh, good story. All right, race two, we've got another stake race and we're gonna have another big favorite. And, and I, ASD Live, I made the comment that I thought Diamond Digger is the best two-year-old at the track right now and he is getting seems even bigger from a couple weeks ago three weeks ago uh, this horse looked so good the, the the you have to watch the replay of the last race and see that this was not a dream trip whatsoever got in a bit of trouble and then then uh, he the diamond just kind of pulled shady to the lead and and he just kind of hung on and, and took over in a, a lightning quick time for this level so um i don't uh i don't see why anything's going to change like i said he's just he's getting big i think he's going to get even better as it gets as the races get longer in the race so that's uh, telling somebody everybody that a one to nine shot's going to be tough to beat is kind of silly but um Anything to add on the... No, Diamond Digger, he just suits the part. And I really like the way, like you said, the way he's finishing the races, he's doing it with the greatest of ease. That minute and two-fifths last time out in the graduation, it, it was done with the greatest of ease, just like Hidden Grace in the last race in the distaff. So Diamond Digger, there's not too much new horses to go against does have to go against favorite who last time out reared at the break lost all chance did make up a pile of ground but uh there is no other speed to go with diamond digger even though he doesn't have a lot so he's not gonna have to work early but and he just does it so easy with that big long stride i think he's just gonna be out coasting on the front end favorite is my second selection as it is for yours first time out this horse reared at the break and the jockey was spit out the back door of the starting gate, then reared at the break again. But what this horse showed against Diamond Digger was a big heart, because this horse was 20 lengths back, probably 30 at one point, and then came running down the lane, only got beat by nine, but uh, could have ran second in there with the greatest of ease if it even kind of got out of the gate with the horses and didn't spot them that much. But last time out, got away perfectly and favorite ran huge against Banking on Betty, who in her two starts, both were winning efforts. Yes, very good. Yeah, it's all about if, if uh, well, you saw the horse improve that third start, learning how to run a little bit. And it, yeah, it runs that effort. Uh, she gets second for me. I ended up going with, with Brown Owl as my third selection. Yes, the times are a little bit uh, slower as compared to some of them, but again, there were, this horse had a bit of trouble. And I just like when these young horses don't get a, a dream trip or have some trouble and still, still run and win. And that's what happened with, with Brown Owl. And so that's why it was, it, for me, it's a kind of a bit of a toss up for third. That's why I ended up on the one over over the other other couple that I could have chose. So yeah, yeah. Brown Owl did run a great race, winning effort by three and a half. But I like number two unscripted for third. This horse was well backed in the maiden allowance uh, first start and definitely ran huge in there. Fourth beaten 10, but banking on Betty. Barely Regal has yet to come back and run, but that horse was the four to five favorite in the sales stakes when it was scratched. 
So unscripted, uh, looked like it might be running away there on the racetrack as we did see uh, a little bit. I'll have to confirm that with the stewards, but if this horse is in, definitely this one can improve. Yeah, and then let's go to a horse that's probably going to be the longest shot, and that's the three. And we've seen horses, two-year-olds, especially this year, you almost throw out that first start and, and then get an improved effort. This horse's first race was entered into a stakes race, so you're not going to waste starts on a horse that you didn't think had some talent. And so, yeah, of course, it lost to Diamond Digger, but everybody lost to Diamond Digger. This horse, only one start, takes the blinkers off. Maybe they, Courtney thought, okay, we got to change that, and then threw in a nice uh, four furlong work. So this horse is not a complete... Uh, throw out uh, especially uh, at a long shot and maybe if the five doesn't improve that much and the three does maybe there's your upset for a bigger exactor yeah well it hopped at the break and then but was still with the field through fractions of 46 and three so thirsty years did tire late down the lane they're only going a half a furlong farther and does come back with, with a good gate work Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a late scratch in here in race number two. Scratch number two, unscripted. Once again, a late scratch here in race number two. Scratch the two, unscripted. So as we were talking about thirsty ears, the blinkers were off and uh, today. And Mean Money, the horse that ran second to Diamond Digger, did come back to win very impressively. So that was not an easy race last time out. No, 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 not at all. Um, yeah, the uh, I've got uh, nothing to add right now. All right, <laughs> nothing to add. Well, we're what we're going to do is have to change some of our selections in here. At least I'm going to have to. All right, let's go to our bets here in race number two. Stretch, straight exactor. Straight exactor. It's my biggest exactor of the year. Oh, big joy, <laughs> but whatever. There it is. It's it, for me. It's a gut four or five. I thought, uh, yeah, four or five. See, I agree with you, but now I'm gonna jump on the triactor instead. The two was a late scratch. So Beth, we're gonna have to switch it up. Let's put the three in my picks and let's put the three in the bottom of my triactor. Yes, I'm not taking Brown Owl. I'm gonna go with Thirsty Ears. So I'm gonna go a $20 triactor, four, five, and three. A little bit more work for you, Beth. Sorry about that. But I'm going for a $20 one because I think this horse will show speed and run around there. So that's what we got here in race number two. And we'll see you back for race number three. Kicking off jackpot pick five wagering.
And ladies and gentlemen, with regards to that late scratch of number two, Unscripted, 
Of course, it is a complete refund, and you do have time to change your tickets. If you use number two unscripted in your early daily double, there will be a consolation payout. If you use number two unscripted in your pick three, the favorite at post time will be substituted. Once again, that was a late scratch of number two unscripted. And once again, with that late scratch of number two unscripted, there will be a slight delay. Your patience is greatly appreciated. And ladies and gentlemen, as we are waiting for this slight delay here in race number two, for those of you playing the pick five this evening, we'll give you the changes that are in the pick five. Turning your programs to race number four, number two, who hears a Horton make the jockey Jorge Carreño. That's race number four. Number two, who hears a Horton make the jockey Jorge Carreño. Now turning your programs to race number six. In race six, number three, Ben Roy make the jockey Richard Mangley. That's Richard Mangley. We'll ride number three, Ben Roy in race number six. Now turning your programs to race number seven. Scratch number one, Empirical Data. That's race number seven, Scratch the one, Empirical Data. Number six, Little Bit of Thunder. The owners should read Perry Kavanaugh. That's in race number seven, number six, Little Bit of Thunder. The owner, Perry Kavanaugh. We're in race number two, the 58th running of the Osiris Stakes.
again, ladies and gentlemen. Take note that a chance to make some very big money continues every live race day here at the Downs. You are guaranteed $250,000 if you have the single winning ticket in the jackpot pick five. This will continue every live race day at 7.30 until the end of the race meet on September the 15th or until the $250,000 is won. The jackpot pick five tickets are just 20 cents each and it starts in the next race, race number three.
Ladies and gentlemen, the riders are now legging up on the horses. The post parade, approximately one minute away.
at Cinnaboy Downs is proud to present our co-featured event here in race number two. It's the 58th running of the Osiris Stakes for two-year-olds. They're going to go five and a half furlongs for $35,000. Number one is Brown Owl, owned by Frank Johnson and S&J Kootenai, trained by Old Nicky with Jorge Carreño. Number two, Unscripted, was Scratched. Number three is Thirsty Ears, owned by Pink Cloud Racing, trained by Courtney Ross with Neville Stevenson. Number four is Diamond Digger, owned by The Young and the Rest of Us, trained by Michael Nault, with Stanley Chady Jr. Rounding out the field is number five favorite, owned by Shelley Brown, B and J Stable, Oslin Bell, and Steve Holburn. Trained by Shelley Brown with Leroy Nelson. The 58th running of the Osiris Stakes here in race number two. They'll go postward in three minutes. Now, two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, two year old steak race going five and a half. The four is an absolute jump off the page. I think it's the top two year old here. You're going to get to see a potential superstar in the making. Who's going to run second? I've got the five. I think this is the, the filly that's improving with each start. If she gets out of the gate, watch for a, a top effort. And, and she might become a, a nice filly in the future. Just not quite good enough to, the, to beat the, the four in here. One would be my third choice. So I've got it four, five, one. Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you. That Diamond Digger has looked special in the two outings, winning easily, both of them. Looks like the speed in here, one to nine on the board, not much value on the win. I agree with you, favorite, if she gets out of the gate, I think she's second best, but if you're looking for a long shot, maybe if she doesn't. Look at number three, Thirsty Ears, does get blinkers off, and little changes on two-year-olds sometimes make big changes. Good luck here in the Osiris Stakes.
the two-year-olds into the starting gate. Next up, Thirsty Ears. Diamond Digger, the one-to-five choice. Set to move in. And now just waiting on Favorite on the outside. They're all set. They're at the post. And they're off in the 56 running of the Osiris Stakes. From the inside, Thirsty Ears. Shows a little bit of early speed with Diamond Digger. On the outside, now taking over. Back in third favorite. About four lengths off it. And Brown Owl. I'll be your early trailer. About six off the early lead. The opening quarter, 23 and three, and Diamond Digger on the outside with Thirsty Ears all out, putting in a bid on the rail. Then about a gap of five lengths back to favorite, starting a roll, and Brown Owl is the trailer. They hit the head of the lane, the half 47 and four, and it's Diamond Digger now going on by and taking the lead back to second. Thirsty Ears favorite on the outside with a good late rally, but it's all Diamond Digger. The winner of the Osiris Stakes, favorite is second best, third to Thirsty Ears and Brown Owl rounds out the top four. Stewart's a poster number four, Diamond Digger. As a race winner. Second goes to number five, Favorite. Third to number three, Thirsty Ears. And fourth to number one, Brown Owl. They went the opening quarter, 23 and three. The half, 47 and four. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 107 and one.
Now entering the winner's enclosure, the undefeated winner. Here in the 50th running of the Osiris Stakes, that's number four, Diamond Digger. Diamond Digger is a dark bear, brown gelding, two years old by violence. Out of the mare, Prayer Bell by Pulpit. Owned by the young and the rest of us, trained by Michael Nault, and ridden to victory by Stanley Chady Jr. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 107 and 1. Assiniboy Downs is very pleased to have on hand our CEO, Darren Dunn, to make a presentation to the winning connections. Race two is official in the upcoming third race. Kicking off jackpot pick five, wagering the Jarvis Swarita, also known as Starfield Stables, in recognition of a lifetime contributions to the Manitoba thoroughbred racing and breeding industry, there are no changes. But we'll carry on with the rest of the changes in this evening's pick five. Turning your programs to race number four, number two, who hears a Horton, make the jockey Jorge Carreño. That's race number four, number two, who hears a Horton, the jockey Jorge Carreño. Now turning your programs to race number six, number three, Ben Roy, make the jockey Richard Mangley. That's race number six, number three, Ben Roy, the jockey Richard Mangley. Turning your programs to race number seven, Scratch number one, Empirical Data. Number six, Little Bit of Thunder. The owner should read Perry Kavanaugh. That's race number seven, Scratch the One, Empirical Data. And number six, Little Bit of Thunder. The owner, Perry Kavanaugh. Jackpot pick five, wagering. Here in race number three, they go to post in 16 minutes.
And welcome back down the paddock for race number three, kicking off jackpot pick five wagering with a $3,500 claimer for three-year-olds and up that are non-winners of the year or non-four lifers. And they're gonna go six furlong stretch. Diamond Digger looked the part again today. Yes, absolutely, looks good. Uh, do you think as the next stop, the Winnipeg Futurity? Definitely is, uh, another impressive win. So uh, I think, yeah, he's gonna try and make it four in a row. And he's, I just, how he's built looks like that. He's that type of horse that can handle no problem because are they not going around two turns or are they gonna go to the one? Yeah, they're just doing the one, one. but uh, I, I think that this horse can run okay. as far as they wanna go just by the way he's built and everything. But definitely this was a solid purchase and they didn't pay a lot for it. And already earnings uh, just under $50,000. Wow, very nice. Here we go, kicking off the pick three, pick five, I'll get it right. Um, and there's some good betting races. The first two races, uh, they're the favorites, just watching some superstars. It's always uh, nice to watch those. We don't have, we have some runners in here. We may not have superstars, but we can still make money on this race and the 250000 I am going to start with my top selection, and that's St. Geezy, the five. This horse has a very dirtied up last two races. Is the horse declining? Maybe a little, but that last re the last race was better than look, that there was enough speed in there. There was, you'll see a couple of the other horses in that race later on, uh, including Hot Rod and Prest. This horse drops. There is not a lot of pure speed in here. And when this horse got out early in the season, showed the speed, had the figures, if, if the horse can get back to close from, from those other races, I think he's gonna be tough because there is not that much speed. And so that, that's why it is my top selection. Um, yeah, and your top selection? Yeah, I went to number two rule tonight. This horse did run against some good horses, even though at the lesser tracks, Chippewa Downs and Fargo in North Dakota, but it's who it's run against. If you look back on June the 6th, ran against my father's eyes. That was a solid $5,000 claimer here. Master Juba was a speedball and won those four and a half furlong races, which w would have been expected coming from here, going down there. But that's as far as that horse can run. And Rule the Night was second best to it twice and uh, beat Yo Why Me. That's a horse that won for 5,000 in his debut here at the Downs. So there's some good horses on Roland Knight's uh, form here. And so St. Geezy will have the speed, but I don't expect Roland Knight to be too far away. I expect it to be in probably the top two, about two, three lengths from the lead. And you get a hot rider, Sheldon Chickness, had the hat trick last Wednesday, riding lights out. So that's why I like the two Roland Knight. Yeah, no, fair, fair point. Good points to make note of, like that Master Juba and, and Yo Mai Wee. That, that kind of get backs it that the, you know who's in the field, and it's always hard for the, the bush tracks to know what, what's in there. Uh, my second selection, and, and your th third, is uh, Proud and Loud. This horse makes a drop, and I talked about it on ASD Live that the, uh, it might not look great because it finished sixth, but if you look at the figures in the class, like that was a tough 5,000 field. And I think this horse has to drop. He's not running as well as he did last year. Has a little maintenance work coming in. Now in a spot that he can win, it's, it's, it's a good field, but not the level of the five to 7,500 field. So I, I think you can't leave this horse out. I think he's gonna be definitely in the top three. If there's, if there's a duel or, or the five comes back, five and six duel or something, I think he can certainly be there. Yeah, I definitely like this horse. This fits that horse American League we talked about. That was a horse that dropped from the same level, finishing fourth, fifth, and sixth, only beaten inside of five lengths. It dropped to the 3,500 and ended up winning and rather convincingly won the $3,500 level. Proud and Loud before that was in for 7,500. And you do see the horse, My Father's Eyes, did run third in that race. And uh, Proud and Loud, that was probably one of the worst finishes. Eighth beaten seven and three quarters. But that was a really tough dash that day. I expect Proud and Loud to run a big one here and getting good odds at three to one on a dropper. Absolutely. Uh, and, and now the six. Six, I'll just 
touch on the six and you can follow it up. This horse I've been backing at different times and using in there, got him when the win. This is a game horse. This is, this is his level, 3,500. He's gonna be stalking on the outside. He's not a pure speed horse, but if five decides not to go or is, is in the decline, watch out. Could steal it on the front end if, if anybody lets him go and he gets, he does get tough and brave when he's on or near the lead. So again, another horse um, I'm not leaving out in the pick uh, five for sure. Yeah, and as you see, that was that winter American League that ran against Valid Thor, taking the drop from 5,000. That ended up beating him, but this horse runs every single time out. So if it gets the trip today, definitely a big player. All right, let's go to our wagers. Here in race number three, jackpot pick five time. Let's try and get that 250,000 stretch started off. All right, we're a little bit different, so I can grab the pool because you don't have the exact same com combinations as I do, so thank you for that, Kurt. No problem. All right, 20 cent pick five. I'm gonna have three, five, and six in here. In the fourth race, four, six, seven. Fifth race, one, four, and seven. Seven's my long shot. Uh, it's hard to tell with the con track condition. And the race, six, two, six, seven, and three and four in the last. Three is the price horse for me. Well, we're the same on the last leg. I got two, three, and six here in race three, then the five and seven, then one, three, four, five, race six, the two, four, and seven, and then round it out with three and four. My ticket, 2880. Good luck with all your selections here in race number three, and we'll see you back for race four, kicking off $25,000 guaranteed. Pick four, wagering. Horses are on the track for race number three, the Jarvis Swarita, also known as Starfield Stables Purse. They're going to go six furlongs for $9,800. Number one is Bevolution, owned by Pink Cloud Racing, trained by Courtney Ross with Stanley Chady Jr. Number two is Rule the Night. Owned and trained by Perry Cavanaugh, Sheldon Chicken has aboard. Number three is Proud and Loud. Owned by Wind Dancer Stable, trained by Wendy Anderson with Neville Stevenson. Number four is Maddie's Pro. Owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno with Antonio Whitehall. Number five is St. Gizzi. Owned by A2 Racing, trained by Michael Nalt with Leroy Nelson. Rounding out the field is number six, Valid Thor, owned by Jared Brown and Sue Crane, trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Carreño. Jackpot pick five, wagering here in race number three. They go to post in three minutes. Thank you. 
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Right, we've got six furlongs, a very competitive race. The public doesn't know who the favorite's gonna be. It's down to the, looks like the two, three, five, and six. I've landed on the five because I think he can go gain the lead, get brave on the front end, and basically go gate to wire. We've seen speed do all right early. It's hard to tell with the big favorites, but could get loose, and when horses get loose, get, they get brave on the front end. That's my top selection. If there is a duel, the other horse is the three. The three will be coming off the pace. Watch for that. So I've got it five, three, and six. Kurt. Well, Stretch, I think you're leaving out one important one in here. Number two, rule the night. This horse has run against a lot, uh, a lot of tough horses at Chippewa and Fargo. Yes, they are lesser racetracks. We've had two horses come from Fargo, and so far they have a win and a second place finish. And both times, you did get good odds. Right now, we're getting five to one. Good luck here in race three. Evolution, the first one to enter the starting gate. Roll the night is also in. Next up, proud and loud. Maddie's pro's turn. Now just two left to load. The co-favorite, St. Geezy. Now just waiting on the other co-favorite, Valid Thor. The field is set. They're at the post. Rule the night a little fractious in the starting gate. And they're off. Hopping at the start was Bevelotion. From the inside, proud and loud. Uh, trying to get the early lead, but St. Geezy got the early jump. And we'll have the lead by a length. Proud and loud with the pressure on the inside. On the outside, Valid Thor. In between horses in fourth, Maddie's Pro. Rule the night in fifth. Only about four lengths off of it. And the early trailer after the poor beginning, Bevolution. Six off the lead. The opening quarter, 23 and one, a log jab on the front. Proud and loud now goes on by. 
and just blows the lead by a length and a half. To the outside, Valid Thor, St. Geezy. Back to third, rule the night. And Maddie's Pro running as a pair in Bevolution, still the trailer. They hit the head of the lane, the half, 46 and two. Proud and loud, looking good with the lead by a length and a half. Valid Thor running out of ground a 16th of a mile to go. It's on the lead, Proud and Loud, and Proud and Loud is gonna take it. Valid Thor, second best. Third's gonna go to Maddie's Pro, and fourth to Bevolution. The Stewart's supposed to number three, Proud and Loud, as your race winner. Second goes to number six, Valid Thor. Third to number four, Maddie's Pro. And fourth to number one, Bevolution. They went the opening quarter 23 and one. The half 46 and two. Time for the six furlongs. One 12 and one. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number three, the Jarvis Sorita Sor Starfield Stables Purse. The winner number three, Proud and Loud. Proud and Loud is a big elding, five years old by Proud Citizen. Out of the mare, Betty Solutions by Alesh. Owned by Windancer Stable, trained by Wendy Anderson, and ridden to victory by Neville Stevenson. Time for the six furlongs, one twelve and one. Ladies and gentlemen, this race was in recognition for his lifetime contribution to the Manitoba thoroughbred racing and breeding industry. His horse in race number one, Dazzling Gold, ran second to Hidden Grace. And what a great effort. Jarvis Swarita, also known as Starfield Stables, is gonna get a presentation from our CEO here at Assiniboy Downs, Darren Dunn, and a congratulations just from me. Jarvis, we love you, buddy. Race three is official in the upcoming fourth race. Kicking off $25,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. Number two, who hears a Horton? Make the jockey Jorge Carreño. That's in this the fourth race. Number two, who hears a Horton? The jockey Jorge Carreño. Now turning your programs to race number six. Number three, Benroy. Make the jockey Richard Mangale. That's race number six. Number three, Benroy, the jockey Richard Mangale. Turning your programs to race number seven. Number one, Empirical Data was scratched. Number six, a little bit of thunder, the owner, Perry Cavanaugh. That's race number seven, scratch number one, empirical data. Number six, a little bit of thunder, the owner, Perry Cavanaugh. $25,000 guaranteed pick four wagering, 
starts right here in race number four. They go to post in 18 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, turning your programs back to race number three, we had a claim to report. Claim for $3,500 was your race winner. Number three, proud and loud, claimed by Just for Kick Stable, trainer Sean Morin. And welcome back to Allen Panic 4, race number 4, kicking off $25,000 guaranteed pick 4 wagering with the $5,000 claimer for Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota breads. That are 3 and up, that are non-2 lifers, are going to go 6 furlongs. Number 2, who here's a Horton, the jockey Jorge Carreno, and a special welcome to TVG and all their viewers. Joining us for the pick 4. Quick look back at race three, proud and loud, the dropping class, just what the doctor ordered. Yep, exactly. As, as we talked about earlier, I, you have to understand the class levels and look, and, and so your rule is within five, and the horse was, and my figure said that the horse, this was the right level for, that the horse should be in, and, and sure enough, that he, he came through. Uh, good race again, also by uh, Vald Thor, just stuck on the outside. And Second best, a bridesmaid. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, 
Pick four time, already a bunch of money in the pick four, so we'll probably fly over the 25,000 uh, very soon. I think it's a good, good sequence. And uh, let's start with the outside horse, Not Afraid. This horse won his race uh, a couple weeks ago, but unfortunately uh, kind of went out wide and got in, in the way of, of the other one, and, and they, they disqualified, and, and that was probably the right call. Uh, the horse is dropping down. The good thing is the horse won that race or ran a good effort, and the figures were there, so I don't mind after I got to see that, I was always worried. I would have would not have bet that horse at 20 cents on the dollar, but because of the big drop, but it shows the horse is, is where he should be. So I'm not worried about that. I got the cutback. I determined that this is not the need the lead type horse based on the two races, the first and second races this year, very impressive. And then the third tried to go for the lead. If that happens, then that's trouble and it's probably an all out duel between the four and the seven. So that's why I think the seven's gonna stock and take a run late. Yeah, I definitely think that can happen too. And I like Not Afraid in here, but I also like number six, Right of Vengeance a lot. They are taking the horse off Lasix for today's start. But that last race that Right of Vengeance ran against Pucker and Wits Coco, that was a really good race. Usually this horse would go to the front and then back right out of it and show no late run at all. But last time he kept running all the way to the end, only got beat by two and a quarter lengths. And the second place horse, Wits Coco, jumped up in class into a three-year-old race. And that was, or a non-two life or a and ran absolutely huge going to run of ground and went wire to wire at $50. Puckers coming back in a non three lifetime event. I think that's on Wednesday evening. So those were two good horses that Right of Engines did run against. Now takes the drop into the restricted. And I think this is a spot where this horse will absolutely shine. Yeah, very good point on understanding the level of competition. It says 62.50 down to 5. 62.50 is for Manitoba breads. Um, they so get the 25% bonus. Exactly. So there's different levels. They can be the same race, but the quality. And so now we know we've got two very good quality horses in there. So yes, it is a good pick. My only concern, now there is better quality, that this horse is not past horses in the stretch yet. So that always worries me a little bit. Maybe just his class he can take over. The, my second selection, and happens to be the favorite, which I'm a little surprised on, is the four. This is a need the lead type horse, and she, he will go as far as he can on the front end. And if they let the horse get brave, and, and uh, we saw the rail, Proud and Loud was on the rail last race, yep. that could be enough for this horse to, to steal it. I guess I'm very surprised on the even money. I did not think this horse would be the favorite. That's why I have that horse my second selection. Yeah, I didn't think so either. It drops down from that 10,000 on to, and it, because it's a breed, it was in for 12.5. And that was a good race against Freezing Jimmy, who did come back to win its next start. Bear Bryan and King Nate, that was open company. It did break its maiden for $10,000 in the restricted, beating G's Poppy's Warrior by two and a half lengths. And we've seen that G's Poppy's Warrior was beaten by number seven, Afraid, but placed first through the disqualification. So, those are the predominant three in here, four, six, and seven. Stretch, what if this scenario happens and all three of them say, let's go, and all three of them rock and roll around the racetrack, do you think a closer can still get there? There is a small chance. I mentioned that on the preview of the race on, on our show. That's why I thought that, that the, after handicapping, I didn't think that the seven needed the lead, but if there's a... A, you know, a decent chance at four, six, and seven knockheads. And if that was the case, now the the two is cutting back. The two absolutely has to improve. But he ran second the first start and then won the next start. There's room for improvement. I guess it does have to improve all by about 10 or 12 lengths uh, to win. But like you said, if four, six, and seven knockheads, they battle for the first four or five furlongs, it absolutely sets up for your long shot. Yeah, it definitely does. And, uh, well, let's go to our pick four picks here in race number four stretch. We're going to start it off with you. All right. So 
I don't have any strong, strong opinions on here. We have similar tickets. Uh, you're the big spender today. I went four, six, and seven in here because there's three kind of scenarios that could happen. Fifth race, I took one, four, and seven. I got the kind of two speeds and, a, and the closer, long shot closer. I then have two, six, and seven. And then I finish it up with the three and four, just like you do. Yeah, myself, I have the six, seven here in the first leg with the one, three, four, five. Then I got one, two, four, and seven. I see those middle legs as a little bit tricky and round it out with three and four. That'll cost you $64. Good luck with all your wagers here in race number four, and we'll see you back for race five. The horse are on the track for race number four. They're going to go six furlongs for $9,500. Number one is Elsie's Wish, owned by Larry Falloon and Darren Bouchard, trained by Stephen Gaskin with Antonio Whitehall. Number two is Who Hears a Horton, owned by Colleen O'Hagan, trained by Wendy Anderson with Jorge Carreño. Number three is Private Edison, Owned by Virginia Vargo, trained by Sean Morin with Nyrone Austin. The four is Crowned Royal, owned by Arneson Farms, trained by Lee Sprutt with Stanley Chady Jr. Number five is Mr. Adventurous, owned by Gordon Wilkie, trained by Perry Kavanaugh with Leroy Nelson. The six is Rite of Engines, owned by Dr. Betty Hughes, trained by Devin Giddens with Richard Mangley. Running out the field is number seven, Not Afraid, owned by Marvin and Deb Buffalo, trained by Marvin Buffalo with Sheldon Chickeness. Post time for race number four, four minutes away.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Right, kicking off the pick four. We six furlong race. We've got seven horses. I've got it down to three, as does the betting public. Seven is my top selection. I think he's gonna stop, sit just off the four and take a run at him late because I think he can come off the pace. Cuts back from that seven and a half furlongs. But if the four gets brave and they let the four go, could go gate to wire. It, it, it's between those two, but hey, you never know. That six could be coming late. So, so I've got it seven, four, six, Kurt. Yeah, myself in here, I like number six, Red of Vengeance. Came out of a real tough dash last time out. Pucker was the winner, and that horse was running for maiden allowance and doing well earlier on. Witz Coco came back to win an allowance non-two lifer and did it convincingly going a mile at $50, beating a huge favorite in there. Major Shepherd, which would destroy this field. So that's why I like Right of Vengeance, and it stuck around chasing after speed. It might be the speed in here. Good luck here in race four. The Philly leads the field into the starting gate. Who hears a Horton is next? It's now Private Edison's turn. Crown Royal walks up and in. Mr. Adventurous set to take his place. Now just two left to load. Right of Vengeance. And waiting on the four to five choice, not afraid. And they'll all be set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the far outside, not afraid. Quickly, right out to get the lead by two. 
Crown Royal back in second. Right of Vengeance third on the outside with Mr. Adventurous back in fourth. Seven lengths off it. Who hears a Horton? Then it's Private Edison and Elsie's Wish, but it doesn't off the lead. 23 and 1 the opening quarter and not afraid. Still with the advantage by two lengths. In full pursuit, Crown Royal in second. Right of Vengeance closing the gap in third. Then a gap about nine lengths back. To who here's a Horton and Elsie's wish. 46 and 1 for the half mile. They hit the head of the lane. And not afraid, not giving up. Is opening up on the field by four. Crown Royal securing second. A 16th of a mile to go. And there's no doubt about this one. Not afraid is going to win it by about four. Second's going to go to Crown Royal. Third to right of Vengeance. And fourth. To who hears a Horton. The Stewart's are posted number seven, Not Afraid, as your race winner. Second goes to number four, Crown Royal. Third to number six, Right of Vengeance. And fourth to number two, Who Hears a Horton. They went the opening quarter 23 and one. The half 46 and one. Time for the six furlongs, 112 and two. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number four, that's number seven, Not Afraid. Not Afraid, it's a chestnut gelding, three years old by Vindagari. Out of the mare, I Ain't Afraid by Ghost Zapper. Owned by Marvin and Deb Buffalo, trained by Marvin Buffalo, and ridden to victory by Sheldon Chickadass. Time for the six furlongs, one, twelve, and two. Race 4 is official in the upcoming 5th race. There are no changes. 
Post time for race number five, 17 minutes away. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's back. Winnipeg's most popular night market right here at Assiniboia Downs. On Sunday, September 5th and September 19th, from 1 till 11, it does feature more than 100 exhibitors and local artisans, more than 20 food trucks, 10 live bands. That's right, 10 bands and a beer garden. Admission is just $7.00. Five and under are free, and parking is just five bucks. Tickets are available at the door. They're at the post, and they're off. From the far outside, not afraid. Quickly, right out to get the lead by two. Crown Royal back in second. Right of Vengeance third on the outside with Mr. Adventurous back in fourth. Seven lengths off with who hears a Horton. Then it's Private Edison and Elsie's Wish, but it doesn't off the lead. 23 and one the opening quarter and not afraid. Still with the advantage by two lengths. In full pursuit, Crown Royal in second. Right of Vengeance closing the gap in third. Then a gap about nine lengths back to who here's a Horton and Elsie's wish. 46 and one for the half mile. They hit the head of the lane and not afraid, not giving up. Is opening up on the field by four. Crown Royal securing second, a 16th of a mile to go. And there's no doubt about this one. Not Afraid is going to win it by about four. Second's going to go to Crown Royal, third to Right of Vengeance, and fourth to Who Hears a Horton.
Welcome back down the paddock for race number five. We have a $3,500 claimer. Four three-year-olds and up, only going five furlongs. Special welcome again to TVG and all their viewers. Not afraid, much the best in the last race. Correct. Uh, when you're the best, just get to the lead and go. And, and a quick time, what we've seen that yeah, all day. Yeah, for but... breeds going down in 112 and change. We've seen a lot of these races over the past month and a half going 15, 16, and even 17. Yeah, absolutely. So we know what the track is, is like. We'll, we'll see how it continues on the day, but it shouldn't change too much. Uh, five, only going five furlongs. We've got the rematch from July 7th in here. And uh, on July 7th, as you can see, the one horse won, uh, I won't say convincingly, but kind of in hand. I liked his funny last that time, and and uh, I'm going to give him another chance because he didn't break as sharp as he normally does, and then and then it was a, it was actually a, I thought it was a smart ride by Carino to recognize that didn't break as sharp and kind of took back and kind of chased all the way around the track and ran a ran a nice even race, and and that's not his kind of style. So I like that race that it kind of sets him up. Has only had two starts. Just. This horse doesn't run a lot. He just lives for these five furlong races. He's an absolute specialist. And so I just, I just think he might have a chance to turn the tide on, on the one. Uh, six to five, I'm a little surprised. I thought the one would have the, the, the big money on here. But I'm going to take a bit of a stand and go with the four as my top selection. Yeah, I like number one, Call Me Richard. Was a winner against Hot Rodden and Tis Funny last time they met but then really jumped up to the $7,500 level and found out that that is much tougher, even though he got a clear and easy lead that day. But that extra half a furlong again, that was his undoing. This is another one that likes running short. As you've seen those races at Fawner before coming here, they were all four furlongs. Didn't go past that. Call me Richard, draws the inside. And if Sheldon Chickeness does what he did in the last race, he had not afraid like a bullet out of the gate and opened up quickly. If he does that once again, they just might not be able to catch Call Me Richard again. Absolutely, absolutely for sure there. Notice how, like you said, the last race, seven got the lead. The four decided to chase and wasn't really gaining that much because he went on the outside. Now, in case there is a, an all-out duel, because it's possible one, four, and five, even if the one gets the most speed, it's going to have to be used. I'm kind of looking for some long shots to fill in here. Now, seven was a, a top long shot. I thought the track condition was going to be a little bit uh, different than it is. Just a great work on the uh, the guys on the, the superintendent, track superintendent. They've done unbelievable to get the track how oh, it's looking so good today. Nice fair racetrack. Anyway, Wolowitz does like the off track, but does close. There's a couple solid races in there that that he can close. And if, if I can get that duel, if the horse horse is going to get positioned because he's, he's not going to be on the lead, he'll be sitting just off. And who knows, Leroy can maybe make a late move and, and pick up the pieces, passing a few of the ones tired uh, to late. So... That's kind of, I'm looking for a bit of a long shot to help the, the tri, trifecta or the exactor in here. Yeah, well, the last time the 1, 4, and 5 met, the closer of the field was number 6, Northern Sky. Only got beat by 2 and 3 quarters in the end. And that, that was only uh, a length and a half, or a little less than a length and a half behind Tis Funny. But I also like a different closer in here. I like number 3, Warbridge. This horse sprinting the last two times ran two dynamite races. Second beating a neck to Northern Sky and then one going five and a half furlongs. Drawing off to win by a length. Last time out was in for 5,000, but that was seven and a half furlongs. I think that was plain and simple too far for Warbridge. Now it's had some time off in between, but I really like that workout on July the 29th. 48 and two for a horse that hasn't worked fast since he's come here. So that's impressive to me. And I think that Call Me Richard will go out. Tis Funny, I think Hot Rodden will be the one putting on the more pressure with Tis Funny right in behind. And if that does happen and the speed starts falling apart, I think Warbridge could be one that could jump up and grab second money. Well, for sure, you've got Murray Duncan who is uh, 
17 of 22 in the money, so he knows where to spot the horses, so he must, you know, recognize that five furlongs is, is the spot. He tried something different, and now he's cutting back from there. And uh, we never, we, we really didn't talk a lot about uh, Hot Rodden in the sense of uh, he's always around there. Like you said, he broke slowly last time, or reared at the break a little bit, and then rushed up, and then, then you know, they went six furlongs, and we've always talked about him. Six is always a little bit too far for yeah, him. Yeah, five so, and a half is the max that yeah. I want to bet him. Yeah, so he was in for 5,000. We saw that that the, in the la that same race, uh, purely given, take note of who won the third race today, and that was uh, uh, Proud and Loud out of the same race. And they're both in for 3,500. It's a different distance. So if you liked uh, the other one, you probably, you've got to like uh, Hot Rodden a little bit because of, you know, it's actually for him, six furlongs to five is a total cutback. Oh, <laughs> you know, so. that's a huge cutback for Hot Rod. And, uh, <laughs> number two, you should talk. Never said much about that. That That's a horse that needs a lead to win. Is against a world of speed in here. So, unfortunately, that goes against you should chalk to be able to run a big one. Yeah, and, unless uh, Kayla just realizes not, maybe they can just sit behind and maybe inherit the lead from there. But All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number five. Stretch. What do you got? Oh, uh, I've got a $10 exactor uh, four with the speed, and I've got the second most, or the most speed that gets tired. If he really gets tired, here comes my long shot late. So $10 exactor wheel, four with one seven. And myself, I think everybody's going to look at one, four, and five because it's five furlongs. But I like the change of barns, and I really like that workout, 48 and two on number three, Warbridge. So I went 30 to place. Looking for a big place price here in race number five. Good luck with all your wagers, and we'll see you back for race six. Horses on the track for race number five. They're going to go five furlongs for eleven thousand dollars. Number one is Call Me Richard, owned and trained by Les Scramstead. Sheldon Chicken is aboard. The two is You Should Talk, owned by Karen Bjarnson, trained by Tom Gardepe Jr. with Caleb Pizarro. Number three is Warbridge, owned by Brian Smith, trained by Murray Duncan with Stanley Chady Jr. The four is Tis Funny, owned by Black Diamond, Lynn White, and Jerry Geddes, trained by Tom Gardepe Jr. with Jorge Carreño. Number five is Hot Rodden, owned and trained by Maria Stanford, Neville Stevenson aboard. The six is Northern Sky, owned by Tessa Fay Stable, trained by Shelley Brown with Antonio Whitehall. Rounding out the field is number seven, Wolowitz, owned by A2 Racing and Hannah Diltz, trained by Michael Nault with Leroy Nelson. Post time for race number five, two minutes away.
right, this race is only going five furlongs. It's gonna be quick. We've got speed in here. The one, four, and five like to go to the front. They all can't be on the front, but I think that the four can take over from the speed, sit just off the one and take over late. He's just sitting on a top effort. Carino's gonna be in the right spot. If those ones back up, but my long shot of the day that's uh, 19 to one is the seven. He will be coming late on the outside, won't be up close early. So I've got it 417. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I went to the inside speed. Number one, call me Richard. That last race was just too tough. In for 75 wide open, was a winner against the four and five last time they did met and was a convincing winner. Yes, it was in a different barn that day but does have inside speed. I do have a long shot to go with that one. Number three, Warbridge, goes over to the Murray Duncan barn, comes in with a really sharp work in 48 and two. Look for improvement at 13 to one. Good luck here in race five. Richard, the first one loaded. You should talk, walks in. Next up, Warbridge. Tis funny. The current eight to five favorite also is in. The speedy hot rodden goes in. Two left to load. Northern Sky. Now just waiting on Wolowitz to the outside. They're all set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the middle of the track, that's Tiz Funny. Quickly going out and getting the lead by half a length. To the outside, Hot Rod and putting on the pressure. Call me Richard. Back to third, two lengths behind with Wolowitz on the outside in fourth. Then it's Warbridge, six lengths off it. Another gap of five lengths to You Should Talk. And Northern Sky, the early trailer. 22 flat, the opening quarter. And it's Tis Funny and Hot Rod. Both of them battling heads as they hit the head of the lane. Call me Richard, coming off the rail, trying to come at him with Wolowitz, Warbridge, looking for a seam. Hot Rodden now takes the lead. Warbridge now gets through late. Gonna take one last try, but Hot Rodden is gonna win it. Warbridge second best, very close for third and fourth between You Should Talk and Wolowitz. The Stewart's supposed to number five, Hot Rodden as your race winner. Second goes to number three, Warbridge. A photograph to determine the third place finisher. They went the opening quarter, 22 seconds. The half, 46 seconds. Time for the five furlongs, 59 flat.
Results of the photo show number two. You Should Talk finishing third. Number seven, Wolowitz, was fourth. Now in the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number five, that's number five, Hot Rodden. Hot Rodden is a chestnut gelding, eight years old, by Heat Shield. Out of the mare, Gorgeous Guma, by Maria's Mon. Owned and trained by Maria Stanford, and ridden to victory by Neville Stevenson. Time for the five furlongs, 59 seconds. Congratulations goes out to jockey Neville Stevenson who scores his second winner on the card. Two wins for jockey Neville Stevenson. Race five's official in the upcoming sixth race. Number three, Ben Roy, make the jockey Richard Mangley. That's in this is sixth race. Number three, Ben Roy, the jockey Richard Mangley. Pulse time for race number six, 18 minutes away. And ladies and gentlemen, take note that there are 82 VLTs for your enjoyment every day in the Club West Gaming Lounge. That's located on the second level and are open from 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. The second level is also the place for dining all day and for playing simulcast racing from top tracks from around the world. You can make reservations to watch live racing from the Terrace Dining Room. Also take note that Fridays are steak nights and Saturdays prime rib nights, all located on the second level. And it's Warbridge, six lengths off it. Another gap of five lengths to You Should Talk. And Northern Sky, the early trailer. 22 flat, the opening quarter. And it's Tis Funny and Hot Rod. Both of them battling heads as they hit the head of the lane. Call me Richard, coming off the rail, trying to come at him with Wolowitz. Warbridge looking for a seam. Hot Rod now takes the lead. Warbridge now gets through late. Gonna take one last try, but Hot Rodden is gonna win it. Warbridge second best, very close for third and fourth. Between you Mm-hmm. 
Ladies and gentlemen, turning your programs back to race number five, we had a claim to report. Claim for $3,500 was number two, You Should Talk. Claim by Lee Deleron, owner trainer. Also, ladies and gentlemen, we have a dark gray Chevy Silverado license plate HUR230. Please go to guest services. That's located on the main level, South End. That's a dark gray Chevy Silverado license plate HUR230. Please go to guest services on the main level, South End. And welcome back down the paddock for race number six for this allowance optional. $15,000 claimer for three-year-olds. They're gonna go seven furlongs. Special welcome to TVG, number three, Ben Roy. Make the jockey Richard Mangley stretch five furlongs. Hot rodden, great race. Yeah, like we, with our last comment was, he's actually, his, that's a big cutback for him from six back to five. We know is he's a specialty. Smart ride, he's just, he's just is in uh, his level of 5,000, 3,500, and starting to make that, that race, that uh, point given race, the-, the Purely given, look even you. better. Yes, yeah, so now that, well, we've had two come out in the last two races out of that race already win, so uh, stay tuned for race seven. And Warbridge got in a little bit of trouble there. Uh, 6.30 on the place yes. price, but- uh, yeah, still a winner. Yes, and that's that's that was such a smart bet because we thought maybe a speed horse could get away, and you made a nice bet. Thirty dollars to play six thirty is a huge return. You know, it would been great if he had got up for. Well, the pick I'll take four, that all day long. For uh, sure. Any six dollar mutual or above is always a good one. Okay, who do you like in the three year olds here in race six? Okay, so I'm a little surprised on there's a, enough money in there, quite a bit of money on the one. And uh, that's not my top selection. That's not either one of us in the top uh, top three. Three, and we've got uh, we've got four horses in here. War Warriors Hero number two is my top selection. Thanks, Jake. Good work. Uh, this horse is coming from the Manitoba Derby. Nobody's actually come out of that and won yet, and the top two have not raced since. But I like that that Stephen Gaskin skipped the uh, six furlong race two weeks ago. And uh, or a week ago, instead of coming back quickly, skipped it. Now going the mile or seven furlongs, two turns, and that's what this horse is better at going the two turns. Uh, I think it's just a smart move on what he's gone with here. He, he ran a nice race at the Derby, wasn't beating the top two. This is his type. He's, I think this horse is actually starting to improve or take to the dirt, and so I don't like taking horses off from the d turf only into the dirt. First race was okay, second race is, it was a little bit better actually on the figures, and here we go. It's Warriors Hero time to win at seven to one. Can I get those odds right now, Kurt? Yeah, no doubt. You think the speed in here is number four, Stone Cafe, and number five, Call the Cops. Both of these horses have showed speed in their last few, and uh, so I think there is some pace in here to set up for another closer. I do like Warriors Hero in here. Can't believe the seven to one right now, but I also like number seven, Wits Taquito. Wits Taquito didn't run well in the Derby, but in the Derby trial was second beat in the neck behind Flash of Glory and just ahead of Warriors Hero. And then ran the flat race in the Derby, but came back to run a really gallant second behind Freezing Jimmy, who won his previous start and then won that one. So I think Wits Taquito has more tactical speed than Flash of Glory and Warriors Hero. I think from the seven hole, might be able to slip on down, be in the top three, four horses, around third or fourth in behind them. So I think Wits Taquito will get a good trip, and that's why I put it on top. Yeah, agree with you. I, I, I almost put this horse on, on top. I just went from the seven furlongs being a little bit on the outside. I, I agree with you completely. And, and my third selection is the six flash of glory. I think this horse is a little bit better going longer. 
Last race kind of just ran evenly, just probably not his distance, gets that extra week off. And uh, yeah, beat, beat about three of these, three of them in here um, in the Derby trial. So uh, back to the right distance, that horse is five to one. So some great prices on our selections. And you have one last one, you're going with the speed in case it gets away? Yeah, definitely Stone Cafe. This horse has ran really well, uh, ran a good third in the Golden Boy, came back and challenged in the Derby trial a little er earlier than Wits Taquito, Warriors Hero and Flash of Glory, and then ended up tiring, but didn't get beat much in there, only two lengths. And last time out was the one used up on the front end when it couldn't clear. But this is a horse that might be able to clear in here. And if it does, that could be a crazy 14 to one that you're getting because Call the Cops has yet to go around two turns and inside speed is what you want going seven furlongs, huge advantage. Yep, yeah, yeah, if, if uh, you can put the speed away and hold off, you're right. They're only going seven, quick to the turn, any kind of breather may get the jump on them for sure. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number six. Stretch, starting it off with you. I took the closers. I took the, so if, if four and five run around the track, I will not be cashing. So I've got the $3 exactor box, two, six, and seven. And myself, I'm going after the late daily double. I'm taking a $5 one, the two and seven in the first leg with the three and four in race number seven for a cost of $20. Good luck with all your wagers here in race six. And we'll see you back for race seven, jackpot high five time. on the track for race number six. They're going to go seven furlongs for $14,700. Number one is Impressive Sense, owned by True North Thoroughbreds and Arson Farms, trained by Lee Spruett with Stanley Chady Jr. The two is Warrior's Hero, owned by Purple Rose Ranch and John Gannis, trained by Stephen Gaskin with Antonio Whitehall. Number three is Ben Roy, owned by the Assiniboia Racing Club, trained by Devin Gittens with Richard Mangley. Number four is Stone Cafe, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno with Neville Stevenson. Number five is Call the Cops, owned by Dr. Betty Hughes, trained by Elton Dickey with Leroy Nelson. Number six is Flash of Glory, owned by True North Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Nault with Jorge Carreño. Rounding out the field is number seven, Wits Taquito, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, with Sheldon Chickenass. Post time for race number six, four minutes away.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Right, we're going seven furlongs. It's quick to the turn. It's two turns right in front of the grandstand. I've got the two as my top selection here. I think you're gonna, there's gonna be a pace battle up front between the four and the five. Two should get a nice rail trip. Antonio will have this horse in a nice spot. Make the move at the top of the stretch and, and hopefully take over from the speed. And then I've got a couple of the other closers with the six and the seven. They'll be closing too. Need that pace battle to set it up for the closers. So I've got it two, seven, six. Yeah, myself in here. I went to number seven with Stiquito. I think this horse will get a dream trip behind the speed of the four Stone Cafe and the five Call the Cops as the two and three are deep closers. Impressive sense has some speed to offer. So I think Wits Taquito sits in the top four horses. They'll have the first shot at those leaders. Nine to two on the board. I do like Warriors Hero, the two. The long shot, number four, Stone Cafe. Could even steal it in here at 16 to one. Good luck here in race six. Impressive sense. The current four to five choice leads the three year olds into the starting eight. Warriors Hero goes in. Next up, Stone Cafe. Call the cops ready to go in. Flash of Glory is next. Just two left to load. Wits Taquito on the outside. And now just waiting on Ben Roy. They're all set, they're at the post. And they're off. From the inside, impressive sense. Show some good early speed with call the cops. Looking them in the eye and these two set to do some early battling. Stone Cafe has settled in behind them in third with Wits Taquito. Back in fourth. 
in fifth. Warriors Hero now five off of it. Seven lengths off the lead flash of glory. And Benroy can see them all. The opening quarter, 24 and four. And it's called the cops and impressive sense. Still with the lead, Wits Taquito. Creeping up on the outside in third. Patiently in four, Stone Cafe. Warriors Hero now only four off of it. Flash of Glory getting into it, and Benroy still the trailer, the half 49 and one. And Call the Cops takes over the lead by a length. On the outside, Wits Taquito. Impressive sense back to third. Rallying on the outside, Warriors Hero and Flash of Glory. They hit the head of the lane. Call the Cops is going to try and steal this one. But Wits Taquito has some late run with Flash of Glory on the far outside. Wits Taquito, Flash of Glory is going to take it. Wits Taquito, second best. Close for third between Call the Cops and Warriors Hero. The Stewart's supposed to number six, Flash of Glory, as your race winner. Second goes to number seven, Wits Taquito. A photograph has been called to determine the show position. They went the opening quarter, 24 and four. The half, 49 and one. Six furlongs, 114 and two. Time for the seven furlongs, 127 and three. Results of the photo show number two, Warriors Hero finishing third. Fourth goes to number five, Call the Cops. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number six, that's number six, Flash of Glory. Flash of Glory is a chestnut gulling, three years old by point of entry. Out of the mare, Sandy's ready by more than ready. Owned by True North Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Nault, and ridden to victory by Jorge Carreño. Time for the seven furlongs, 127 and three. Congratulations goes out to trainer Michael Nault, for saddling his second winner. And also, congratulations goes out to jockey Jorge Carreño, who scores the double. Two wins for jockey Jorge Carreño. <laughs> Race six is official in the upcoming seventh race. Scratch number one, empirical data. Number six, a little bit of thunder. The owner should read Perry Cavanaugh. That's in this, the upcoming seventh race. Scratch number one, empirical data. And number six, a little bit of thunder. The owner should read Perry Cavanaugh. Jackpot high five wagering the carryover. 
over $120,000, they go to post in 17 minutes. Impressive sense. Show some good early. And ladies and gentlemen, that jackpot high five does continue, continue to grow. It's more than $120,000, which you can pocket if you have the only ticket with the top five finishers in the last race in the correct order. Bets are only 20 cents each, and quick pick of tickets are available.
And welcome back down the paddock for race number seven for this $2,500 claimer for three year olds and up. And our non winners of the year, they're going to go five furlongs. Scratch number one, Empirical Data. Number six, Little Bit of Thunder. Make the owner, Perry Cavanaugh. Stretch, Flash of Glory. Did what it did in the Derby trial. Yeah, we, we talked about thinking that that horse is better going long, and, and that was sure the case. And that's why uh, with that horse is. You know, I, you kind of agreed too. I thought it was going to set up for some closers and that's why the two, six and seven. And that's why I took the seven. I thought it would have the first shot, which it did, but it still got ran down by flash. Of yeah, I think it was close at the wire. So it's, uh, yes, you, you didn't pick the winner, but it wasn't like uh, you, you, the six won by a lot, but that's why you have to run the race or figure out where everybody is to set it up. The one, you know, was on the rail, but you thought it could get in a bit of a duel. And so that was the problem. The call the cops almost stole it there. Yeah, yeah, ran absolutely massive after breaking its maiden in the last start. That's a good setup race for its next start. For sure. Let's finish off strong here. We got five furlongs only. Another sprint race, kind of the, the other half. Well, this is the non-winners of the year. As mentioned in the ASD live show, I talked about no pure specialists at this distance, but many of the horses in here are successful, have won multiple times at five furlongs. I landed on, on the fours, my, my top selection, making the drop, coming out of a race that has had two winners out of that race today at a higher level. Now the other ones did beat this horse. But I think this horse, if there is, a, there's probably going to be a bit of a duel. I think Deadly Back Eagle is going to run like Hot Rodden did. The class will, the horse will press and then take over and have to uh, hang on, uh, hold off probably the three. But this horse is, is a runner. Yes, he's 10 years old. Isn't the same as he was in 2019. But I just like that last race with getting the lead against uh, some pretty good speed in there and then just tiring late. Now you're cutting, it's a cutback, hot rod and kind of cutback. So that's my top selection. Yeah, I like Deadly Black Eagle, the inside of the speed here. Made for Saturday does have speed, but I don't think it's the same kind of speed as the four. I like number three, Greeley Spirit, just because all I see in this race is speed. He's a lady tamer, loves the front end, all ones, little bit of thunder. Here's a horse that runs against quarter horses and always runs short. So I expect it to show speed and go crow. This horse was the less than even money favorite who got caught late down the lane by a nose by tally. So a pile of speed on the outside. So I went to Greeley Spirit who was a winner two outs ago going wire to wire, but a lot of starts are coming just off the pace. I really like that one three outs ago against Daydreamer. And then last time out, it was Norm's Place who came flying off the pace to get the job done on the big drop in class. But I think Greeley Spirit will be able to grab the rail and watch a lot of early action firing on the front end. Oh, absolutely. This was almost my top selection. I have it between those two horses. And then for me, then it's a drop off who's third. So. Uh, we'll talk about the favorite. I think uh, the horse certainly can win. I would not accept four to five as, as value. There is no value outside there at, uh, at four to five. He's going to have up against him a little bit. Certainly can win. You've got that back class coming from, from Canterbury. I was a little disappointed or, or the horse I didn't think uh, should have lost last time and did. That was against a weaker field. So you know deadly black egos a dropper and and your greeley spirit is bottoms but is a higher level kind of bottom it's you know it's a little better than than these anyway so do you have another uh, other horse to add other than the seven there kurt uh maybe number five he's a lady tamer this one showed blazing speed in its last couple starts but then uh, wasn't able to hold that speed but that was going five and a half gets the cut back to the five furlongs today that should help, he's a lady tamer. This horse did win at first asking easily and came back and run another big race. Got, did get beat by Northern Sky in there, but Northern Sky was also on a roll at that time. So maybe this horse will be able to stick around for a top three. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I think it's just who gets the trip, who doesn't have to go for the lead and kind of the jockey kind of sits back. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number seven. Stretch, what do you got? Okay, I've got a $3 tri-wheel, 
three, four with three, four with all. You know, Beth, should I change it? No, let's leave it. $3 tri-wheel, three, four with three, four with all. All right, and I'm just betting win in place. I'm betting 10 win on number three, Greeley Spirit and 15 place. Also on Greeley Spirit to round out the card. Good luck with all your wagers here in race seven, and we'll see you back tomorrow, 645 Central for ASD Live. are on the track for race number seven. They're going to go five furlongs for $9,400. Number one, Empirical Data is scratched. Number two is Made for Saturday. Owned and trained by Courtney Ross. Neville Stevenson aboard. Number three is Greeley Spirit. Owned and trained by Elton Dickey. Leroy Nelson in the saddle. Number four is Deadly Black Eagle, owned by Jerry Gowdy and Rick Wise, trained by Rick Wise with Antonio Whitehall. Number five, he's a lady tamer, owned and trained by Dale Zawiesliak, Nairo Austin in the saddle. Number six is a Little Bit of Thunder, owned and trained by Perry Cavanaugh with Sheldon Chickadess. Rounding out the field is number seven, Go Crow. Owned by Cranky Acre Stable, trained by Shelly Brown, with Stanley Shady Jr. Post time for race number seven, three minutes away. Now, two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, we're back to going only five furlongs, similar to a previous race, and that in the fifth race, that uh, speed went basically gate to wire on the outside. I think the same thing is gonna happen here on the four. I'm actually trying to beat the favorite. So I think Deadly Black Eagle will be on or near the lead, put the speed away, 
and uh, hang on from there. And the Greeley Spirit is your only real true closer. So I've got it 4 3, 3 4, and then wide open for third. Kurt? Stretch, I'm with you. I think Greeley Spirit will take advantage of a battle between 4, 5, 6, and 7, who all have really good early speed and one way to win it to the front. You said that Greeley Spirit is the only horse that likes to come off the pace, and that's why I went to him on top, but Deadly Black Eagle, he fits a lot of winners coming out of that $5,000 level, dropping to 35. We've seen them win, but this one's going to 25. So another good price of three to one. Good luck here in race seven. For the night cap. Really Spirit is in. Next up, Deadly Black Eagle. He's a lady tamer. Is in. Two left to load. Little bit of thunder. Now just waiting on the three-way favorite, Go Crow. They're all set, they're at the post. And they're off. From the middle of the track, that's little bit of thunder. Powering the way to the early lead. Deadly Black Eagle on the inside in second, Go Crow. On the outside in third, there are three across the track. Now engaging the leader, a little bit of thunder. 
settled right behind them. He's a lady tamer, then made for Saturday. About six off, off of it, and Greeley Spirit, the trailer. 22 and 2, the opening quarter. And on the inside, that's Deadly Black Eagle. Three wide bid, Go Crow, four wide. He's a lady tamer. They're down the stretch, and Deadly Black Eagle still with the lead. He's a lady tamer. One more try on the far outside. Greeley Spirit with late life. Deadly Black Eagle is going to hang on for the win. Second went to Greeley Spirit. Third to He's a Lady Tamer. The Stewart's supposed to number four, Deadly Black Eagle, as your race winner. A photograph has been called to determine the place and show positions. They went the opening quarter 22 and 2, the half 46 and 3. Time for the five furlongs, one minute even. Results on the photo show number three, Greeley Spirit, finished in second. Third goes to number five, He's a Lady Tamer, and fourth to number seven, Go Crow. Now in the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner here in race seven, that's number four, Deadly Black Eagle. Deadly Black Eagle is a big gelding, 10 years old, by Top Hit, out of the Mare Benchmark's Bounty by Benchmark. Owned by Jerry Gowdy and Rick Wise, trained by Rick Wise, and ridden to victory by Antonio Whitehall. Time for the five furlongs, one minute even. crazy hour in the second level beer wine and shots are just 295 and <laughs> set they're at the post and they're off from the middle of the track that's a little bit of thunder powering the way to the early lead deadly black eagle on the inside in second go crow on the outside in third they're three across the track now engaging the leader a little bit of thunder settled right behind them 
He's a lady tamer than made for Saturday. About six off, off of it and Greeley Spirit, the trailer. 22 and two, the opening quarter. And on the inside, that's Deadly Black Eagle. Three wide, big, go crow, four wide. He's a lady tamer. They're down the stretch and Deadly Black Eagle still with the lead. He's a lady tamer. One more try on the far outside. Greeley Spirit with late life. Deadly Black Eagle is gonna hang on for the win. Second went to Greeley.